right, folks? I'm so loving the festive gathering. There's a lot of energy in the room. Everyone is so excited to be here. I'm going to invite folks to go ahead and take their seats. Um, and um, if SAVP Haggard could come to the front, that would be absolutely great. Thank you all uh, for joining us at the Outstanding Undergraduate Research Awards Ceremony. We're so excited to have you here. We are starting about five minutes late, so we'll do our best to get through this robust program as quick as possible. We have so many folks to acknowledge, and we're so excited to recognize all of you. Um, if you would like to follow along on the program, you can go ahead and do a little raise your camera to the program, and it will show the program up on your phone. You can also visit our.utah.edu, and it's the same program there. Uh, you'll see that it's live streaming as well from our website. So we encourage you if you want to get on social, invite all of your friends and family to join. Uh, oops, sorry, went away. I'll, I'll here. There we go. I'll give you a little bit more time. Folks still, still doing it. Take your time. Um, as a video. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, folks. Um, welcome to the Outstanding Undergraduate Research Award Ceremony. Uh, we, um, as I've talked about, we have this robust program. There's some treats, coffee, juice in the back. Please help yourself to anything in the back, um, either on your way out or if you feel like you need something now, go ahead and help yourself. Yeah, research in its fundamental sense occurs at the moment we begin to answer a question. We are all doing research in a variety of ways, but it takes a different type of support, resourcing, mentoring, and community to foster research that is rigorous and for the collective good. As we consider the current moment, the role of research in solving fundamental problems that impact our present and possible future is profound. In the 21st century, we have witnessed the role that research has in shaping policy, practice, and everyday life. Public health, medicine have been central to the global pandemic response through research-informed strategies. For Utahns, the crisis that we face include environmental concerns with air quality, a housing crisis, and what colleagues and myself have described as a multidemic the multiple crises cohering together with regards to racism, global pandemic, domestic violence, and fatality related to weapons. There are so many urgencies that we face, but even in the face of these crises, I remain optimistic. The 18 colleges at the University of Utah are all collectively so central to solving the social, political, cultural, economical, environmental, medical, and material problems that we face. From grappling with local and global economies, um, to methods informed by the social sciences, to engineering and sciencing solutions, to creating and analyzing culture, discourse, and life through humanistic inquiry and artistic expression, research at the U is dynamic. And it is the intersection of race, gender, abilities that transformation is possible. Today, we come together to celebrate the role of undergraduate research in these complex endeavors, where our researchers are truly at the cutting edge of research and their diversity in fields, methodologies, identities, and communities they represent are so central to the ongoing efforts to diversify a next generation of researchers. This ceremony is a celebration being live streamed to family and friends to recognize scholars of the Francis Family Fund, the D Foundation, the Parent Fund, and the Monson Prize winner, and to celebrate the 17 outstanding undergraduate researcher awardees nominated and selected from our college partners. Before we begin, I invite us all to be in gratitude together. And this gratitude begins with acknowledging our Native American communities. We acknowledge that this land, which is named for the Ute tribe, is a traditional and ancestral homeland of the Shoshone, Paiute, Goshute, and Ute tribes. The University of Utah recognizes and respects the enduring relationship that exists between many indigenous peoples and their traditional homelands. 
We respect the sovereign relationship between tribe states and the federal government, and we affirm the University of Utah's commitment to a partnership with na Native nations and urban Indian communities through research, education, and community outreach activities. Thank you to our Native American communities whose, whose land hosts us as settlers, feeds us, and are also nourishing a next generation of scholars, change makers, and people committed to a common good. At the University of Utah, I wanna take a moment to thank the colleges that the Office of Undergraduate Research Partners with across the University of Utah. And I would also like to just introduce myself in case if you're wondering who this person is. Uh, my name is Dr. Annie Isabel Fukushima. I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies and the Director of the Office of Undergraduate Research. And so I'd like to also now um, acknowledge some of my colleagues um, that I'm so appreciative of your support. Um, and so first I'd like to, if you represent undergraduate studies, if you could please raise your hands. Undergraduate studies, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. We're so appreciative of all of you. I'd also like to take a moment to appreciate the support of the Office of the Vice President of Research. Um, and you'll hear from uh, VPR Aaron Rothwell, but I also want to acknowledge that AVP Jake Jensen is also in the room. Raise your hand. Thank you. I also want to appreciate the leadership across campus. Please stand if you are a dean, associate dean, assistant dean, or director. Wow, look at that. So much leadership in this room, including all of you. I'd like to also acknowledge uh, the hours and the commitment of faculty, graduate student mentors, and staff mentors who are committed to undergraduate researchers. Please stand if you are a mentor. So beautiful. Um, and we cannot forget the important work of staff who are central to the institution. The Office of Undergraduate Research Team is absolutely brilliant. And many of you actually most likely interact with them more than you interact with me. Um, and so I'd like to, when I call your name, if you could please uh, raise your hand or come forward so we can acknowledge your brilliance. Cindy Greaves, Program Manager. Sandra Liu, advisor. Sandra's manning the live stream right now, so she's hanging out in the back. Um, and then Shiver, academic program manager. And joining us in waving an E hand, Megan Shanahan, academic program manager. The OER team also is, exists and is very vibrant because of our undergraduate research leaders and peer mentors. And we're so honored that we actually are joined by three of them today. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge and um, have Daniel Anderson, who is also graduating in 22. Gary Garg, who's graduating next year, 2023. Emmalyn Irvin, who's also graduating with Daniel, class of 22. Um, and remotely joining is Henry Poncer Orellana, class of 22, Emmy Wickens, class of 2023. Thank you. Um, and I do want to acknowledge that we've got Rob White in the back also uh, manning the tech. Rob, wave your hand. Um, And our beautiful visuals, Ann Dibble. Um, thank you so much, Ann. Uh, we're so appreciative. Um, we will also be acknowledging our donors um, that are so integral to the um, OUR team and undergraduate studies um, throughout our program. And so I just want to say the future of research is made possible because of all of our collective commitment. And so I want to thank all of the family, friends, and community who are watching live. Um, due to the labor, love, and support of so many named and unnamed, the future of undergraduate research is possible today. Uh, we celebrate our undergraduate researchers. Um, and so now we're going to hear from remarks from um, Chase Haggard, and I'm going to go ahead and do an introduction and then invite S.A. 
VP Haggard up. Um, Dr. Chase Haggard is a Senior Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the Office of Undergraduate Studies. Prior to joining the University of Utah, Dr. Haggard led services and a curriculum designed to foster sustained student development and success at the University of Georgia. As the SVP, SAVPAA and Dean of Undergraduate Studies, Dr. Haggard is leading undergraduate studies to enhance equitable experiences and institutional commitments to foster undergraduate student success. Please welcome SAVPAA Haggard. <laughs> Thank you very much, Annie, and thank you all for being here today, uh, both in person um, and online. I joke with folks that there are just too many letters there. So um, friends, colleagues, students call me Chase, and then we're good. So it is really a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to be at the University of Utah uh, in this role. I have three points of hopeful uh, inspiration for you all. First, to congratulate students um, and the faculty who serve as their mentors and as the families and supporters who are joining us today. What you do in research you may not see it in the moment, but has the potential, and I would go so far as to say it will uh, change the world. And where we find ourselves today, many of us masked, many of us concerned about climate change, uh, never before, I would argue, and I am a historian by training, so I'll lean hard on, on that space, never before have we needed more creative, inventive, and innovative solutions uh, than now. And I wanna congratulate you on pressing into those spaces in the life of the mind. My second point is gonna to be to celebrate, uh, to celebrate you and to celebrate undergraduate research at the University of Utah. We know from research, we've known for quite some time, but we know it locally as well, that undergraduate research experiences are directly linked to positive educational outcomes at both this institution and others. In terms of students' deepened learning, their expansion into the horizon of things that we don't know quite yet, and helping us all collect come to know things in new ways. Undergraduate research activity also impacts career and post-graduation decisions. A number of our students, I'll share, I believe, data in a moment to let you know that a lot of the students, many of you present here, are headed off to either graduate education or other um, educational opportunities. So we know that undergraduate research uh, certainly enhances where our students' future may take them. In fact, a lot of the po positive educational outcomes clearly demonstrate in our data, uh, both historic and at current, that OUR, the Office of Undergraduate Research Participants, utilize previous research. They articulate research, new and exciting research questions. They utilize appropriate research methodologies in partnership with their faculty mentors, and they show the ability to present research findings. I think we'll see more of that tomorrow, and I'll go ahead and say, come on over, uh, and Annie may uh, tell us more details there. I don't wanna steal some of that excitement, uh, but we'll see a symposium of students sharing those research findings. And, and they do that in a way that is far more effective if we think about a deepened learning experience, which is really what the Office of Undergraduate Studies is all about. When we compare those activities and those outcomes with students um, who aren't engaged in undergraduate research, we see that undergraduate researchers are having a deeper kind of experience. And we're gonna do more. We're going to do more of that at the University of Utah. And I imagine my colleague, Dr. Aaron Rothwell may speak more about that in a moment. But in terms of partnerships between undergraduate studies and the Office of the Vice President for Research, how we scale that up to see more students at the University of Utah take advantage and have these kinds of experiences. Again, it's linked to positive outcomes with retention and graduation. A number of faculty and administrators in the room know exactly what I'm talking about there. We know that OUR participants graduate in an average of 4.5 years. Just that engagement, just that involvement. Now, you, some of you uh, scientists in the room might say correlation and causation, Chase. Are you, uh, that? look at, oh, here we go. Um, the students are gonna check me on it more than anybody else. We know though that that kind of activity is contributing to a timely graduation rate. Lastly, I'll say this in terms of celebrate, undergraduate research impacts career and post-graduation uh, decisions. One in four, in fact, of OUR participants 
infants go on to graduate or professional school or medical school to deepen. They, they, they've lit a spark in undergraduate research, and they're going to see that come to full fruition uh, beyond. The last thing that I'll offer in terms of inspiration is a challenge, a challenge to everyone here in the room and everyone joining us virtually to think about research in new and exciting ways. Think about your uh, participation in research and the kinds of questions you ask yourself as you go about life. Um, why is there no sidewalk here? Why is there no curb cut, you know, for accessibility? Why, you know, why is the freeway uh, designed the way that it is? Why should I buy locally sourced or not uh, produce? Those kinds of questions, as our students in the room today represent, help us to think about how we take research in each of our daily lives to the next level in ways that impact our community, our state, our university, for sure, and our world. And again, there has been no better time to think about research in each of our lives uh, than at the present. So thank you all again very, very much, and congratulations, students. I'd like to now um, introduce um, Dr. Aaron Rothwell, who is the Interim Vice President for Research at the University of Utah. She is also a professor in obstetrics and gynecology in the School of Medicine at the University of Utah. Dr. Rothwell has a range of expertise, including bioethics, evaluation, qualitative methodologies, and public health. As VPR, Dr. Rothwell is committed to advancing ethical research practices on campus, modernizing research education and training, spearheading research integrity policies and procedures, advancing equity, diversity, and inclusion in research for faculty, staff, and students, and developing critical research offices and resources at the university. Please welcome VPR Rothwell. Well, it's a pleasure to be here today, and I, I know we're excited just to give out the award, so I'm going to keep this brief. But I think everyone here knows that the University of Utah is on, on the rise. We had $641 million in research funding last year, and it's going to continue to grow. Um, and I won't tell you how much it will grow until July 1st. Um, <clears throat> I'm just so proud to see all these young investigators because I don't look at these students as undergraduate researchers. I look at them as beginning or young investigators, beginning a path. And I just want to say that the reason that I ended up getting my PhD, doing a postdoc, a medical fellowship was because of an undergraduate research experience. And I still remember, um, I don't know if anybody kn knows but I, um, or has this experience, but I had to put, pay for college myself. So not only did I get student loans, I had to work all the way through. And one of the many jobs I had was in campus recreation. And I was um, the director of campus reg uh, recreation. I still remember his name, Dr. Philip Theodore. He was bald. He had the thickest mustache and he was shorter than me. And um, he said, Aaron, I think you, you, I think you have something special. And he goes, I'm going to start this study and I want to see if you'll help me. And I said, well, I mean, am I going to get paid why I do this? Because I have to, you know, cover my tuition, my dorms and books. He's like, Yes. And so um, we ended up doing an experiment on how we give feedback to students during intramurals, right? And the way that it was delivered, did it promote more values clarification towards um, moral development as a college student or did it not? Um, and of course, obviously it's, there's a lot of co-founders, but it was very exciting. I ended up publishing it. I ended up getting going on to my master's in that domain um, and then eventually moving on. And to this day, he still emails me. I still email him. Um, we still share publications. And even though he's retired as of last year, um, it, it was it changed my trajectory. And so when I look at the Office of Undergraduate Research, I really want to continue to grow this partnership. I want to expand it to include more disciplines. Um, I know that we have, you know, transform here, social and behavioral science, education, engineering, um, and so much more. And I just want to say, and nursing, um, I just want to say thank you so much for all of the hard work and opening up your dry or wet labs um, to engage in this research. So, I totally did not follow my speech. Um, 
But I, I just want to say thank you, Annie. Thank you, Chase. And um, we look forward to um, many more programs, maybe even looking at some of these discipline specific programs. Um, but as our research portfolio grows, so should our undergraduate research. Thank you. The Francis Family Foundation is one of our charitable donors supporting undergraduate research students at the U. The John and Irene Francis Endowment Fund was established in 2010 by John A. Francis in memory of his loving wife, Irene, and his son, Dr. John G. Francis, who was a University of Utah professor in political science with the College of Social and Behavioral Science. At the University of Utah, the John A. and Irene F. Francis Endowment Fund awards $1,200 to undergraduate researchers in the third semester of Europe. This fund specifically supports students who are conducting research in the arts, social sciences, or humanities. Students and their mentors are honored at the annual undergraduate research awards ceremony. Since 2014, 57 undergraduate researchers have been awarded this scholarship, many going on to pursue graduate school and other endeavors inspired by their work. A message from John G. Francis reads, at a research university, education is best understood as a shared endeavor between the faculty and the students in learning more about ourselves and the world around us. We build upon the foundations of past scholarship and preparing students to contribute to future knowledge. We also believe that education takes place both inside and outside the classroom. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the achievements of our students which take place in all disciplines and media, from the laboratory to the stage. The University of Utah Office of Undergraduate Research and Undergraduate Studies extends a deep appreciation to the Francis family for their- Sorry. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Thank you so much. I'd like to now invite um, up, um, the following folks. If we could have the Francis recipients um, join us on this side, and then we will have um, SAVP Haggard's going to read some names. So you're going to come up here, and Aaron Rothwell is going to pass out the certificates with Cindy. And I would also love to invite up um, uh, Dr. Uh, Francis, if you'd like to also come and shake hands with our recipients. We would love to have you um, come up too. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Chloe Butler. Kendall Chatard with mentor Professor Tim Webster in Social and Behavioral Sciences. Shaista Den with Professor Marissa Diener in Social and Behavioral Sciences. Gari Garg with mentor Professor Adam DeHaven in Medicine. Wyatt Hudgens with, with mentor professors Jim Curry and Juliet Carlisle in social and behavioral science. Sada Orozka 
with mentor Professor Veronica Valdez in education. Sayun Park with mentor Professor Annie Isabel Fukushima from the College of Transform. And Madeline Sorensen with mentor Professor Rebecca Utz from Social and Behavioral Science. It's my first ceremony, so I'm not as smooth as I'd like to be, but if we have mentors, we'd also love to invite you up to take photos with your mentee. The D Foundation is a donor who supports scholarships with the Office of Undergraduate Research at the University of Utah. The D family has a long history of charitable acts, from founding Salt Lake's first nonprofit hospital to funding financially vulnerable graduate nursing students. Inspired by the generosity of his parents, Tom and Annie, Lawrence and his wife, Janet, founded the Lawrence TD and Janet TD Foundation in 1971. With this foundation, they wish to promote charitable activities in Ogden and the surrounding area. While the founders of the D Foundation passed, their legacy is continued by their children and grandchildren. Lawrence and Janet's only son, Tom, ran the foundation following his parents' passing. Tom and his wife, Elizabeth, had two sons, Tim and David Lawrence D. Lawrence and Janet's legacy of giving is carried on today by a board of directors comprised of their two grandsons, Tim and David, and their great-grandson, Matthew T.B. The D Foundation is dedicated to furthering the growth and well-being of the people of Northern Utah. At the University of Utah, the D Foundation awards $1,200 to undergraduate students whose research contributes to the well-being of the residents of Northern Utah. Students awarded with the D Scholarship are recognized at the annual Undergraduate Research Awards Ceremony along with their mentors. The D Foundation has supported 37 undergraduate research students since 2014. The University of Utah Office of Undergraduate Research and Undergraduate Studies extends a deep appreciation to the D Foundation for their commitment to supporting undergraduate research that furthers the well-being and growth of Utahns. To learn more about scholarship opportunities for the Office of Undergraduate Research, visit our.utah.edu. I'd now like to invite up the D Foundation scholars on this side. And then if you're a mentor, you can meet them on this side and take a photo with them. And I'd like to also invite up VPR Rothwell, who will be reading the names. All right. Elle Gadet, and the mentor was Professor Peter Fino in the College of Health. Heather Graham, um, and was mentored by Professor Kim Hackford Peer in the College of Transform. Annika Ism um, was mentored by Ben Christensen in the School of Medicine. Madeline Jensen was met, uh, mentored by Ram Goal in the College of Science. Kai Prune was mentored by Professor Tommaso Lenzi in the College of Engineering. Madeline Sorensen was mentored by Professor Rebecca Oates in the College of Social and Behavioral Science. And Zachary Wanaker is mentored by Professor Serena Sinclair in the School of Medicine.
All right, we're slowly getting the hang of this. Thank you, folks. Now we'd like to invite up the Parent Fund Scholars. And I would like to invite up on this side, the Parent Fund Scholars to receive your certificate. And um, if we can have um, VPR Rothwell and uh, SAVP Haggard on this side. And the mentors, please meet them on the other side to take a photo. Congratulations to Pooja Anijeri, whose mentor is Professor Nitin Fadness in science. Congratulations to Abby Sitterman, whose mentor is Professor Jake George in engineering. Congratulations to Dylan Falau, whose mentor is Professor Tao Gao in engineering. And congratulations to Lauren Holsey, whose mentor is Professor Nitin Fadness in science. The Monson Essay Prize is a scholarship administered through the Office of Undergraduate Research at the University of Utah. This award honors the life of Charles H. Monson, who was a distinguished member of the University Philosophy Department from 1958 to 1974. Monson earned his bachelor's and master's degrees in philosophy from the University of Utah. In 1958, Monson returned to the U as a professor in the philosophy department. He served as the associate academic vice president and chair of the philosophy department during his time. Monson's inspiring lectures and administration at the U earned him the Distinguished Teaching Award in 1970. University of Utah philosophy professor Charles H. Monson was a renowned teacher with a deep commitment to the understanding of social change. In his honor, this annual prize was established in 2006 to award an undergraduate who writes an outstanding abstract and paper on a subject having to do with change. The abstracts are judged by a faculty panel and the winner is expected to produce an original piece of work that is five to 20 pages in length based on the abstract that was submitted. A $600 cash award will be presented at a special luncheon with Carl and Sharon Chatton to provide generous support for the prize. Since 2010, 15 undergraduate students at the U have been given this prestigious award. Monson had dreams of establishing a forum for change funded by the royalties from books he planned to write and publish. Sadly, this dream did not come true as Monson passed away at age 50 due to complications from a knee surgery. The Monson Award is supported by royalties, donations, and family contributions today as it honors Charles' memory. The University of Utah's Office of Undergraduate Research and Undergraduate Studies extends a deep appreciation to Mr. Carl Shatton for continuing on the establishment of the legacy set forth by the late Ms. Sharon Monson Shatton to create the endowment for the Monson Prize. The um, I would like to invite up um, Mr. Um, Carl Shatton, if you'd like to meet the prize winner. Um, I'd also like to invite up Cassie John and your mentor, Elpitha Tsutsunakis. So we'd like to congratulate Cassie John, whose paper, Dene Bazad Language Cubes, examining the reformation of indigenous language preservation is the 2022 uh, winner of the Monson Prize paper. Um, her mentor is Alpita Tsutsunakis, who's a um, professor in multidisciplinary design division in the College of Architecture and Planning. Please congratulate Cassie uh, for her recognition.
All right, folks, um, we are now going to go to the last award of um, this morning, which is the Outstanding Undergraduate Research Award for 2022. Faculty nominate undergraduate researchers who exemplify excellence in research. This 2022 cohort is outstanding, and I welcome the college deans, associate deans, and leaders of the college as we go through the different colleges um, to meet your recipient on this side to congratulate them. I'd also like to invite up uh, VPR Rothwell and SAVP Haggard um, to present the plaques. As I read your name, please do come up to receive your award. for the College of Architecture and Planning. I'd like to also invite up uh, the leadership of CAP, uh, which includes Senior Associate Dean Agutter, if you could also come up to congratulate the recipient. Now we'd also like to invite up Samantha Eddy and her mentor, Professor Shindana Yusuf. Thank you. In the words of Dr. Yusuf, Samantha's mentor, Samantha is a member of the Navajo Nation and a junior ma majoring in architectural studies and minoring in American Indian Studies at the University of Utah. In summer 2021, Samantha was funded by Europe to conduct a research project in Diné Bikea. She worked under my supervision, spending time in the nation to develop cultural resources, mapping by interviewing elders and gathering oral histories about their houses, infrastructural needs, relationship with animals, plants, water, and land, and rituals of construction. The strength of her oral histories for Europe became the foundation of grants received. First, it led to a proposal to regenerate a monument entitled Walking with Deneta, supported by a $100,000 grant from a monument lab and Mellon Foundation. For this art project, she is researching and designing strategies for cultural resilience and healing through memory work, oral histories, map making, and participatory art. In other words, walking in beauty. She is working with Media Lab at the University of Utah to create a living digital archive for this project, collecting narratives from elders and asset mapping with residents of Chilchen Beto, Cayenta, and Dene Hotso in Navajo Nation. Her research and design will generate an indigenous trail in Chilchen Beto through embedding digitally recorded knowledge, place-based indigenous art, mnemonic installations, and local vegetation that will attract wildlife. Please um, congratulate Samantha Eddy. I'd like to now invite up from the David Eccles School of Business, the leadership to join us at the front of the room. Do we, oh, we might not, sorry. We might have faculty mentor and student, thank you. So now I'd like to also invite up Rachel Nelson and mentor, Professor Srivasan. Srinivasan, I'm sorry. Yeah, in the words of the department chair of the Department of Operations and Information Systems, Glenn Schmidt, Rachel Nelson for the university's undergraduate research award, this nomination has full support of Rachel's honors thesis advisor, um, Srinivasan, the department's honors program coordinator, Ramachandran, and the department chair, Glenn Schmidt. Rachel is very motivated and possibly one of the best students we have seen in our OIS undergraduate programs. Several of the faculty who have worked with her attest to this. The strength of the arguments she puts forth as she weaves together findings from multiple disciplines to make her point throughout the thesis is something one would expect from a PhD student who is close to their second year comprehensive exams. Her unique background with majors in information systems, psychology, health society and policy, and minors in history and cognitive science has given her a unique foundation to think critically and independently that a student focusing on one or two areas alone may not be able to. The the hard work and motivation she exhibited to present her work at the University of Utah's COVID-19 Research Symposium in June 2021 
where other researchers, other presenters were mostly PhDs and MDs, also contributes significantly to the research culture in general and serves as an inspiration for other undergrad students to aim high and go after challenges. Congratulations to Rachel Nelson. I'd like to now invite up um, the School for Cultural and Social Transformation Leadership, Dean Catherine Bond Stockton. I'd also like to invite up Joshua Christensen and mentor, Professor Lisa Diamond. In the words of Dr. Diamond, Joshua's mentor, among all the students that I have worked with during my 22 years at the University of Utah, he stands out as one of the finest, and he is extraordinarily deserving of this honor. I'm currently serving as his honor thesis advisor, and to be honest, sometimes I have to remind myself that he is not a graduate student. Josh wanted to study religious trauma among LGBTQ individuals who have been members of the LDS Church. This is a topic that I've become increasingly interested in during the past few years, and so I was excited about the prospect of working with him. He consistently impressed me with his thoughtfulness, conscientiousness, and intellectual maturity. After launching the survey within one day, he had 200 inquiries, and within a week, he had over 600 participants. The fact that his hypotheses were powerfully confirmed was the icing on the cake. The project has been so successful that I decided I wanted to turn it into a longitudinal study. As I told Josh, his thesis project had the potential to become the first ever longitudinal study. Josh is an extraordinary student and researcher, and I look forward to considering him my colleague. He exemplifies the qualities that undergraduate research is supposed to foster. Congratulations to Josh. I'd like to now invite up um, Dean White Hume and Sophia Bowler and her mentor, Melody Weller, are ready to go. Look at that. Thank you. In the words of Dr. Weller, Sophia is currently an undergraduate at the University of Utah majoring in biology and has been working in my lab as an undergraduate research assistant since summer 2021. During Sophia's time working with my research team, she has proven herself to be highly focused and collaborative early career scientist and is an awardee of the fall 2021 and spring 22 undergraduate research opportunity program. Sophia is one of the top undergraduate research assistants I have had the opportunity to train and work with. She was remarkable at finding literature that I had not previously found and was very detail oriented in laying out the literature review information. Upon relaxing of COVID-19 safety conditions, Sophia began to work in person and joined the research team working on defining the salivary gland virome and viruses associated with the development of non-Hodgkin lymphoma in Shajordan's syndrome. Sorry. <laughs> Sophia is working on a manuscript with myself and our project team that will define the salivary gland virum. Sophia has proven her amazing capacity to work independently and as part of a collaborative research team. Um, and so congratulations to Sophia Bowler. I'd like to now invite up Dean Nancy Songer, Associate Dean Burbank, and Dr. Josephine Amako, and Sara Orozco. The award for College of Education is Sara Orozco. In the words of Dr. Valdez, 
The research experiences Ms. Orozco has undertaken over the last two years were supported by the funding from the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program at the University of Utah. As an ethnic studies major with strong interests in Latinx education, community-engaged scholarship, and teacher preparation for working with multilingual Latinx learners and communities, the aims and quality of Ms. Orozco's sustained involvement in research efforts are noteworthy for their contributions to issues important to the College of Education. Her current 2021-22 research endeavors under my mentorship have focused on understanding the literature around the education of multilingual learners designated as English learners, ML, MLs and the preparation of teachers who are charged with educating them. The specific fo focus of Orozco's project has evolved toward an examination of dispositions, attitudes about language, and language learners changed for teacher participation in an ESL endorsement program. Ms. Orozco is a wonderful undergraduate scholar who brings a deep commitment to learning ways to improve the educational experience of Latinx students, families, and communities. Her work as a student navigator at the University of Utah Student Affairs Trio office and her commitment to continually developing her research skills and deepening her understanding of the issues being investigated make her deserving uh, for serious consideration. So congratulations to Sara Orozco College of Education. <laughs> Now I'd like to invite up the leadership of engineering, Dr. Sneha, uh, Dean, Associate Dean Sneha Cassetta. I'd also like to invite up for College of Engineering, Katrina Lee and Professor Thomas Sengel. In the words of Chair Eric Eddings, Katrina Lee has been a uniquely productive researcher within the College of Engineering for a remarkably long span of time since she was a junior in high school. Over the past five years, she has demonstrated the type of research productivity that could rival some of our top PhD candidates. Our college's research miss mission has been tremendously strengthened by Katrina's talents, and we are confident in offering our most enthusiastic endorsement of Ms. Lay for the award of Outstanding Undergraduate Student Researcher. Katrina has worked for and made significant contributions to the research programs of five unique university laboratories across three depart departments, often holding two research positions simultaneously. Katrina's effectiveness as a researcher is not only due to her technical prowess, she has many complementary high order skills which make her an excellent member in any research team. She was the president of our Chem ECAR team where she put her technical skills towards mentoring her peers. She volunteered with COVID Testing Center where she used her coding skills to aid in analysis of thousands of campus COVID tests. She was a member of our department's student advisory committee where she advised faculty on matters important to student research researchers, um, and she has many other things she's been a part of, including the Benyon Scholars Leadership Team. Um, finally, Katrina has been dedicated and effective TA for four of our courses, setting an excellent example for our undergraduates of the type of real impact they can make through cutting edge research occurring on campus. Congratulations to Katrina Lee for her award with the College of Engineering. I'd now like to invite up for the College of Fine Arts, Associate Dean Liz Lecky, mentor Professor Brian Snaps, and Comstock.
being recognized for the College of Fine Arts. Um, so here in the words of Associate Dean Lecky, Comstock is a dedicated, smart, and engaged student, currently pursuing an honors bachelor's of arts in studio art with an emphasis in ceramics. Comstock's impressive accomplishments as an undergraduate research in the College of Fine Arts Center around a commitment to creation of a body of work investigating applications of new materialism to contemporary ceramics. In Comstock's personal statement, they write about the impact research has had on the work as an artist. As I quote, as I was collecting my ideas and scholarly research in my thesis, every new piece I generated picked up a conceptual thread and grew upon it. I found increased independence moving through my degree as a result, finding an ever increasing clarity around a theoretical cache that all of my work pulls from regardless of medium. Everything has all become fodder within a holistic and immersive creative research process. End quote. Comstock began researching this topic in 2018 with the mentorship of Professor of Ceramics, Brian Snap, which has continued through today. Comstock shares that, quote, I've navigated an intersection of studies that there's little precedence for. We'd like to congratulate Comstock with the College of Fine Arts. We'd like to invite up for the College of Health, the Associate Dean, uh, Julie Fritz, um, and any other leadership with the College of Health. We'd also like to invite up Abby Lasky, a mentor, Professor Jeffrey Rose, and academic advisor, Eric Gardner. In the words of Dr. Rose, Abby is an outstanding overall student. She is an honor student and is a double major in parks, recreation, and tourism, and health and kinesiology. Additionally, she is minoring in both geography and ecology and legacy. Abby's honors thesis research is examining the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on outdoor recreation trends in Utah and Intermountain West, using a combination of open data sets from Utah Departmental of Natural Resources and the National Park Service, she ties reported outdoor recreation attendance with Google Mobility Trends data to both descriptively and inferentially compare Utah with other states and regions of the United States. Far from being strict, uh, strictly an academic endeavor, she is also using her research to make applied recommendations for public land management agencies in their efforts to provide open, available, and healthy recreation for visitors who were and are seeking recreation opportunities during trying times. I've worked closely with Abby during the development of her research and found her to be insightful, inventive, careful, and in some cases prescient in her engagement with these research questions. Please congratulate Abby with the College of Health. I'd like to now invite up Dean Sylvia Tordy with, with the Honors College. And Marla, Dean Marla DeJong. <laughs> We'd also like to invite up mentor um, Professor Jennifer Alderden and representative Professor Molly um, Cummins and Casey McFarland to receive the award for the Honors College. In the words of Dr. Alderden, Ms. McFarland is an outstanding new researcher whose enthusiasm, curiosity, and hard work have resulted in highly innovative, impactful research project entitled, quote, pressure injury risk in ICU patients with COVID-19, end quote. Ms. McFarland has worked tirelessly to develop research skills. Research regarding COVID-19 is challenging because COVID-19 is an emerging disease without a robust body of literature or experts consensus. Ms. McFarland tackled learning about COVID-19 and understanding possible mechanisms of pressure injury formation in patients with COVID-19 with energy and enthusiasm. She synthesized what is known about the pathophysiology of pressure injuries and the emerging evidence about the way COVID-19 affects organ systems to develop a coherent and plausible hypothesis. Her ability to independently synthesize complex, complex psychological 
physiological topics, apply them to data from the electronic health record and draw robust conclusions is awe-inspiring. Ms. McFarland has shown tremendous research acuity in her honors undergraduate research th thesis. She has also been active in other research endeavors at the department, college, university, and external lev levels. Ms. McFarland submitted an abstract based on her thesis findings to a blinded peer review 2022 Western Institute of Nursing and was selected for a presentation. Her contributions were so robust that she is included as an author on a paper currently under review at the journal Computers, in Computers Informatics and Nursing. Ms. McFarland is an impressive undergraduate scholar who is also willing to help others. Please congratulate Casey McFarland uh, with the Honors College. I'd like to now invite up AVP Jake Jensen with regards to the College of Humanities recipient who will be recognizing McKay Muscleston and Professor, and also like to invite up Professor Kuznetso. In the words of Dr. Jane Hacking, McKay will graduate in spring 22 with a BA in Russian and a minor in city planning. This is an intriguing combination and no doubt fairly unique. His final paper, Berezniki, 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 a case study of contemporary methods to address urban shrinkage, explored the problem of urban shrinkage, which is endemic in Russia. As he notes in Russia, quote, most urban settlements have lost 70% of their population since 1989, end quote. The project addresses definitions of urban shrinkage and ways in which it is measured. His work focused on a town in Berezniki, which has shrunk by 16% since 2006. This semester, McKay has continued to explore the complexity of urban shrinkage in Russia and is working to produce an expanded version of the summer paper in Russian. To do so, he's been expanding his Russian language research through close reading of additional theoretical and empirical studies and conference presentations by Russian speaking experts in the field. McKay's independence, scientific curiosity, and evident proficiency in Russian have led him to initiate communication with authors of seminal Russian studies on this topic. In sum, McKay exemplifies independent and critical thinking and positively contributes to interdisciplinary research culture of the College of Humanities and the University. Congratulations, McKay, for your award with Humanities. I'd like now to invite up Kaylee Ferret and a mentor, Professor Leslie Francis, and if leadership of the law school are present as well. In the words of Dr. Leslie Francis, I am writing to nominate Kaylee Ferret for this award. Ferret was a student in my philosophy of law class fall 2021. During that semester, she met weekly with me to develop her proposal for a year up. The proposal is on abortion rights in the decline of Roe. Initially, her research consisted of learning about current abor abortion jurisprudence and more particularly what is happening in Texas. Then she did a wonderful research for me on commentary about the Texas law and travel out of Texas for abortions. All this was completely on a volunteer basis, and we met weekly. Then she applied for Europe, writing a terrific proposal that was all her own work. Um, and here's a brief summary. 
Texas abortion law is unique in its likely effects on women's health. It stands in especially sharp contrast to changes in Mexico. Ferret's Europe application was successful. This, is, this semester, we have been meeting weekly on the project she's preparing to present. She's also sharpening her focus for her planned honor thesis, which is most likely to be an analysis of the impacts of one of the most common abortion limits likely to be upheld in the wake of what the Supreme Court decides in the Mississippi case this spring, early summer. She is a first-rate student who has demonstrated the ability for independence and research, and I think the award would be very meaningful for her. Congratulations to Kaylee for the award with College of Law. Now we'd like to invite up Avery Abelhosen, uh, mentor Joseph Yost, and Sean Flynn and Dr. Chelsea Herdman. To recognize a College of Medicine recipient. Okay. In the words of Dr. Yost, I met Avery in December 2018 when she was looking for a lab in which she could explore research as a volunteer during the spring semester in anticipation of applying for summer 2019 Europe fellowship, her outstanding work and progress led me to find some financial support for her to work part-time, work in our lab in between our classes ever since. Avery has been in my lab continuously for three years, during which she has grown toward becoming an independent investigator who is more than ready for graduate school. She proved herself to be very reliable trust and a trustworthy student with a great work ethic. She is curious, ambitious, and detail-oriented. Avery is a history major with a minor in chemistry, in addition to her interest in biomedical engineering, and she has a strong scholarship skills in multiple disciplines. From her time in my lab, I think she is well prepared for a career in scientific research. She is quite adept and has become an integral part of our adult cardiac, cardiac regeneration project. I think Avery the best among several, do several dozen undergraduate researchers I've had the honor of mentoring over the years. Congratulations to Avery. I'd like to now invite up Alex Zube, Professor Christine Pankow, Jeff Moore, and Dean Daryl Butt. In the words of Drs. Christine Pankow and Jeff Moore, Alex works with each of us separately on research projects. In work with Dr. Moore, Alex is studying the resonance properties of freestanding rock formations. For this work, he has participated in fieldwork deploying seismometers as well as data analysis. A unique aspect of this work is the integration of rotational seismometers, a class of seismic sensor thought to have a potential for an enhanced seismic analysis, but known to be challenging for both deployments in data analysis and interpretation. Alex presented preliminary results of this research at the 2021 National Conference for Undergraduate Research and will present new results at the 22 Annual Seismological Society of America. Alex is also a co-author on a PhD student-led um, paper with Finnegan et al. With Dr. Pankow, Alex applied advanced seismic detection algorithms to enhance the seismic catalog collected for a 2019 test stimulation at the Utah Frontier Observatory for Research in Geothermal Energy, FORGE. The examples of his direct and indirect research activities demonstrate that Alex can perform both the technical aspects needed for research and aspects related to proposing questions in context with relevant literature and working collaborative with others. Alex is one of the top students we have had the pleasure to work with and is deserving of the recognition as a CMES Outstanding Undergraduate Researcher. Congratulations, Alex.
I'd like to now invite up the leadership of the College of Nursing, Dean Marla DeJong. I'd also like to invite up Carrie Denise Daughter and mentor Lisa Taylor Swanson. In the words of Dr. Swanson, it is a pleasure to support this outstanding individual who stands out as a unique nursing undergraduate student with the potential and commitment to become a future clinician scientist. Carrie has a record of sustained commitment to developing research skills and knowledge under my supervision for over a year. Carrie received Europe funding for two semesters while she worked in my lab. Her senior honors thesis, Diverse Midlife Women's Health Needs and and symptom experience during the menopausal transition will be completed in March 22. Carrie is the second author on a manuscript to be submitted for peer review in a menopause journal. Carrie's independent and critical thinking is evidenced by her insightful analysis of 20 pages of transcribed data collected during the engagement studio with 10 ethnically and racially diverse midlife women. Carrie is a promising undergraduate student. I fully expect her to provide excellent patient care as soon she will be at the bedside as a registered nurse. I anticipate her returning to study in the coming years, so may provide direct patient care as a WHMP. It would not surprise me in the least if she becomes again involved in research as her keen intellect Insightful questions and commitment to women's health are compelling. Congratulations to Carrie with the College of Nursing. I'd like now to invite up, um, oh, Nancy Smith's on crutches. Um, so do you, yeah, whatever works for you, wherever you want to stand works for us, mentor Professor Amy Barrios and Dean Randall Peterson. Okay, wonderful. In the words of Dr. Barrios, I first met Macy at a University Muse program event in the spring of 2019. Although she was only a freshman at the time, she had a clear passion for research, and I was happy to invite her to join our lab and get some hands-on experience. Macy has been an outstanding addition to our lab, bravely spearheading two completely new and completely unrelated independent research projects in my lab. She has an amazing work ethic, finding the time to excel in challenging curriculum for her biomedical engineering major and push her projects forward in the lab independently. She is scientific scientifically curious, taking the extra time to learn about the basis for projects and their place in the larger context of the field. She is also very skilled in the lab, learning new techniques quickly, willing to ask for help when she needs it, but largely working very effectively and independently. She has a very strong communication skills and communicates effectively with lab members and faculty alike. She has presented her work in several different contexts. Macy is a pleasure to work with, both very independent and also willing to ask for help when she has questions. She is a positive influence in the lab by taking her lab responsibilities seriously, exhibiting excellent organizational skills, and asking intellectually challenging questions in group meetings. Macy outshines the very best undergraduates I've worked with, including those who went on to earn PhD, PharmD, and MD degrees. Congratulations to Macy with the College of Pharmacy. Now I'd like to invite up from the College of Science, Elijah Counterman, mentor Professor Sean Lawley, and Associate Dean Burl, Pearl Sandek. In the words of Dr. Lawley, it is my pleasure to recommend Elijah Counterman for a College of Science Research Scholar Award in the strongest possible terms. Elijah and I worked together in the 2020-2021 academic year on a mathematical modeling research project. The problems come from pharmacology. 
What should you do if you accidentally miss a dose of that medication? Skip the dose, double your next dose. We formulated a mathematical model to answer this question. From a mathematical standpoint, we found that this model requires generalizing an exotic random variable studied by eminent mathematician Paul Erdos and others in the 1930s. This project is particularly notable as it involves one, quite novel mathematics, and two, making a clear and practical medical recommendation. To carry out this work, Elijah performed many task, tasks. This work was published in the Journal of Pharma, Pharmacokinetics and Pharmacodynamics. This is a premier journal in this field. Elijah and I published a second paper addressing the following question. How do you design a medication regimen to mitigate patient non-adherence? It is well documented that patient non-adherence is a major public health problem. This work was published in the Bulletin of Mathematical Biology, which is a leading journal in math biology. His talent and work ethic exceeded my already high, very high expectations. I give him my very strongest possible recommendation. Congratulations to Elijah with the College of Science. I would like to now invite up the leadership of the College of Social and Behavioral Science, Associate Dean Rick Forster, as well as Emmanuel Diaz, and mentor Dr. Catherine Bocum. In the words of Dr. Bocum, I am thrilled to nominate Jesus Emmanuel Mani Diaz for the 2022 CSBS Outstanding Undergraduate Research Award. Mani has been an exceptional research assistant on my health and adaptation in relationship team in the Department of Psychology for the past year. During the beginning of his time as a research assistant in the Heart Lab, Manny completed typical RA tasks, data entry, cleaning, literature searches, creating surveys in an online survey platform, as well as more advanced tasks with a high level of competence. He became proficient with our survey platform in Qualtrics and the data analysis software we use, SPSS. Manny wrote an excellent proposal that was funded by Europe this semester. I would place Manny among the top students with whom I've worked with. Yet it is essential to note the adversity that Manny has overcome to excel as he has. After some time working with Manny, I learned the extent of the economic hardships he's experienced as a DACA recipient. Manny has received no financial support from his family for his undergraduate education. Further, his immigration status has limited his access to additional resources. Nonetheless, Manny has devoted substantial time to my research lab, excelled in his classes, Dean's List every semester, and volunteered at various organizations. He has already applied to a graduate program that I expect he will be admitted into. Manny is a shining example of what is possible for low-income, first-generation, immigrant students of color, and he will no doubt use his experience to help countless others. Congratulations to Manny for the CSBS award. It's absolutely heartwarming to be part of this award ceremony. This is my first, um, you know, academic year in this role as Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies and the Director of the Office of Undergraduate Research. And I'm super honored to be working with uh, folks of the OUR team, um, both um, the staff as well as the um, undergraduate research leaders who've been hanging out front, taking amazing photos, um, and they do so much for the office. I also, um, it's just such an honor to work uh, with 
with all these faculty mentors who do all the work of mentoring um, our students. Um, it's just so heartwarming. Um, our closing remarks are going to be very brief um, because I believe that we all want to enjoy some of those treats in the back. Um, and um, all of it is to go. So feel free to take it with you, um, take an extra to share with somebody else. Um, and we just want to thank you all for joining the Office of Undergraduate Research um, at this 22 awards ceremony. We're so honored. Um, as you heard the outstanding research being done um, by undergraduate researchers who are the future of research. Um, it is such a pleasure um, to be um, just a blip in your journey. Um, and I, um, I am very hopeful for the next generation. And so please do stay connected with us. It's an honor to be with you all. Mingle um, as comfortable as you are. Stay connected and you all enjoy the rest of your morning to lunch. Thank you. Uh, you know what, we'll just send a message, let's just let people know. I'm putting it on the top. I hope somebody else didn't borrow it, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs>